so I'm going to talk about some work that was done um, about a year ago, uh, mostly on Zoom, together with uh, Gabe Angelini Noll and Christian Ossoni, Dominic Leon Culver, and Eva Hörning. We have a, a preprint on the archive from, from last year. Uh, and, uh, and the short version of this title is basically Topological Cyclic Homology of BP Pointy Brackets 2. But I thought I would spell it out. Um, right, so um, I'll, uh, let me try to explain this main result first and then set it in, in a context. So if P is a prime, then by the second truncated Brown-Peterson spectrum, we mean a complex oriented or at least orientable spectrum BP2, so that if you look at a map from MU to BP, from BP to BP to MU to BP2, and look at what happens in homotopy, and then we have this subring here generated by V1 and V2, Inside there, th this composite should be an isomorphism. That's a form of BP2 that we're going to talk about. And by the results of Bastera and Mandel, we know that BP has, e4, has an E4 structure, so it makes sense to talk about an E3 BP algebra. And by fairly recent work by Hahn and Wilson, we do indeed know that we can think of BP2 has, has a, we can think of this as an E, um, or admits a structure as um, uh, an E3 BP algebra. So here B, E3 is, you know, the th third order of a homotopy everything. The E is for homotopy everything, if you don't remember Boardman and Vogt. Um, and then if we, if the prime is at least seven, there is going to be a computation, this is going to be a computational talk. It's going to be about a computation in V of two homotopy. What is the V of two homotopy? So we start with the sphere spectrum and take the mapping cone for the degree P self map. So that's a two cell complex, which has a V1 self map. So you can take the cofiber of that. So that's an eight cell complex, which has a V2 self map. So you can take the cofiber of that. That's an eight cell complex, usually called the smith torda complex V of two. This is a finite complex of type, chromatic type three. Um, and when P is at least seven, this is actually a ring spectrum in the homotopy category. Uh, and in particular, it admits a V3 self map. Which I'm just going to denote V3. And we can let T of three be the mapping telescope for iterations of that self map. Uh, or I could take the cofiber, uh, which I guess I'm going to call V, uh, which, which then defines the type 4 complex, V of 3. Um, right. So the theorem is about the topological cyclic, or more precisely the V2. So this is the theorem. V2, Gabe, Christian, Dominic, Eva, and myself, uh, is that the computation is that the V2 homotopy, or mod P V1 and V2 homotopy of the topological cyclic homology of this BP2. So this is a free module. I mean, the V3 self-map makes it into a module over the polynomial ring FPV3, and it's a free module uh, on 12P plus four explicit generators. I don't think uh, it'll be more explicit uh, at some point later in the talk. Um, and we can, but maybe just let me say uh, uh, what their degrees are or in what range they live. They live in degrees. Uh, the bottom one is in degree minus one, and the top one in degree 2p cubed plus 2p squared plus 2p minus three. And um, so as a corollary of this, you can also calculate. Um, so for example, the telescopic homotopy by inverting V2. So the telescopic homotopy of TC of BP2 is then necessarily a free module over the Laurent polynomials. Uh, but here, this is now, for example, also isomorphic to the T3 homotopy of the algebraic K theory 
of VP pointed brackets 2, or if you like, also probably the argument goes via the P K theory of the P completed VP2. So these are all isomorphic, and these are all free FP V3 plus minus in plus minus 1 uh, modules of rank 12 P plus 4 on, 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 well, on, on the basically the same generators. So this exhibits a redshift from BP2, which has height, sort of a height 2 theory related to ellipti elliptic homology. to uh, a height 3 theory for which we don't have any kind of you know, classical or pseudo-classical name. Hyperelliptic is a little too vague, I guess. Um, right. And um, so, so this is a, a direct calculation. So uh, I mean, there, uh, around the same time, uh, well, some of this calculation, some, some of that, uh, goes back quite a long time, but, but in more recent years, the, I mean, one, one might want to think about this calculation in terms of the syntomic uh, cohomology ideas of Batmaro and Schulze. So in the, but of course, that's set up principally in the context of commutative rings uh, involving, at least for quasi-syntomic commutative rings, you can study those that are SPQR, I guess a semi-perfectoid quasi-regular, or various other interpretations of this inter uh, abbreviation. <laughs> uh, what is it? Sono pazzi. Uh, <laughs> oh well. Anyway, um, but um, so, so, so in that sense, this is kind of computing a, a symptomic cohomology, uh, or in the since we're talking about ring spectra in in, in, in the sense of Hahn, Hahn, Roxit, and Wilson. Uh, this is, is probably similar to what they would call a chromatically quasi-syntomic. Uh, basically, the calculation is sort of suggesting what is the answer of a, a, a there is computation by uh, syntomic descent. But um, again, their setup is for E, inf so this is for commutative rings. Uh, as we heard earlier, this is for E infinity rings. But I believe that Piotr Stragovsky's talk tomorrow will sort of explain how to extend this maybe to E2 or E1 rings. Uh, and so, so maybe our E3 story will fit into that. But fortunately, I'm scheduled before Piotr, so, so you'll have to wait. Um, but uh, anyway, the, the computations are so, then all suggesting that um, the K theory of things like BP2 uh, is related to E3, and now I mean the Lubin Tate theory E3, not, not the operad. Uh, so that, for example, the K3 local K theory here should definitely have a map here and maybe even be equivalent to some sort of homotopy fixed points uh, for uh, some group action on E3, which would be analogous to results uh, how we understand algebraic K theory of, of rings of integers or number fields, for example, in terms of Galois descent. Um, so the group G here might be profinite or maybe even pro pi finite in the sense of this uh, chromatic Fourier transform paper of Bartl, uh, Karmeli, Schlank, and Janowski. Um, one more comment about what we get out of these computations. There is, a, as you saw in, in Jeremy Hahn's talk, uh, there, there appears to be a kind of Poincaré duality or, or local Tate duality coming out in these K3 computations, or more precisely in the syntomic cohomology computations. And so classically, uh, for, so there's an in, uh, for, for number fields, or maybe just for, well, so for QP or a finite extension of this, uh, this is related to Galois cohomology, and there's a particular Galois cohomology group that classifies the Brouwer group, and, and there's an invariant of Brouwer groups to Q mod Z. So, you, and so, so this homomorphism out to Q mod Z, one can interpret as a class in the brown commonets dual of algebraic K theory. So if you take the Q mod Z Brown Cominates dual here and look at the V1 homotopy, the, the invariant that classifies Brouwer, the Brouwer group or, uh, for local fields is basically a class in degree 2 in the V1 homotopy of the Brown Cominates dual of the K theory of QP. So, so I mean, this sort of gives you the, 
the evaluation on the fundamental class, which we can uh, to Alti tells you is a nice, uh, a perfect pairing. And our computation then also says that, well, I, I guess with earlier work with Christian Ossoni, it showed that basically the same thing is true in V2 homotopy, where you take topological K-theory here. And this computation says that in the V3 homotopy, also in degree two of the brown combinates dual of the algebraic K-theory of VP2, there is a class, which I'll just call invariant again, which uh, then uh, sort of after the fact specifies this kind of a perfect pairing. It would be nice to have a more intrinsic you know, construction of this class in the way that you have a more intrinsic construction of the invariant for central simple algebras, of course. Right. So the approach to doing this, uh, I probably, uh, let's see, so first of all, well, now that I've started, now that I filled the board, I can move it up, but I'm pretty sure I touched it. I'm sure you noticed. Uh, I'll just move it all the way. So the, the approach to these computations is, is the one of the trace methods. So the cyclotomic trace. Um, so let me draw. So this theory was developed in the 80s, sort of, you know, in the aftermath of the proof of the Siegel conjecture by genuine equivariant methods. And so the people involved were ha very happy to use genuine equivariant language. Um, but, but I want to make the point that all the computations that were made were not using the genuine, well, at least the first 10 years, the computations were made in sort of, by, by only focusing on, on naively equivariant methods. So, so what's the situation here? We have, uh, so if B is, is an E1 ring spectrum or more, such as BP2 is going to be, um, we have a trace invariant from the algebraic K theory of B to the topological Hochschild homology of B. So this is the Bergstedt trace, refining the Dennis trace. And then um, Bergstedt, Song, and Madsen So I learned of this from Chang in around 88. It constructed a refinement of this going through what they call topological cyclic homology. And the refined map here is then called the cyclotomic trace. It was Christophe Soulet who suggested the word cyclotomic for the cyclotomic trace. And this in particular uh, factors through the uh, S1 homotopy fixed points of, um, there's a circle action on THH and you can form the S1 homotopy fixed points, and you can forget that S1 homotopy invariance, and the, this TC of B factors, the trace map factor factors through here by a map I'll call pi. And then all the computations are somehow based on first um, comparing fixed points and homotopy fixed points and geometric fixed points and Tate constructions. And so in particular, THH would be the sort of cyclotomic, THH of B was known to be the equivalent to the CP geometric fixed points of THH of B which then naturally maps by a map we used to call gamma one hat to the CP Tate construction on THH of B. And this is now when here one has taken CP fixed points for a circle action, but there's then a circle mod CP, which is another circle action left behind here. And so you can take homotopy fixed points also for that. Or forget, and there's a map here, which is given by the homotopy fixed points of the map at the bottom here. Um, and they, so I'm going to remind you, or, or I'm going to turn this into more modern notation soon, if you're impatient. Um, there's a second map here. Uh, there was a so-called, what was called a norm restriction sequence, which is now usually called the Tate square, involving a comparison between the S1 homotopy fixed points and the circle. Um, the S1 Tate fixed points. Uh, so this map was, so starting with uh, uh, around 94, Lars Sesselholt learned from um, Peter Schwili that some of the diagrams they were looking at had precisely the same formal structure as the, that for VIT vectors, and for BNS, VIT vector for BNS and VIT vector restriction. So then the terminology, sort of ad hoc terminology that it was before was replaced by say, calling this the F because it has to do with the bit vector for Benius, and this map became an R because it has to do with the bit vector restriction. Uh, and then there is a, well, um, this can be thought of as the S, 
well, the CP10 construction has an S1 action. So this can be thought of as the S1 fixed points, and these are the S1 homotopy fixed points here. So there's another comparison map here between fixed points and homotopy fixed points that we use to call G. Um, and in work by with Bergstedt, uh, Bob Bruner, Luna Nielsen, and myself, we proved uh, for many cases that this is, oh, this is an equivalence. Um, so th uh, now more recently, this is now viewed to be part of the, of the Tate orbit lemma of Nicolaus and Scholze. But it was you know, known in, in the relevant cases before. Um, a p key point here is, of course, that this triangle does not commute. Um, so, so it's quite common now just to, ha to ignore G, to remove G from the notation, just to if you land here, you act as if you land here or vice versa. But it will actually play a role in my, later in our talk, so I want to keep it visible. But in either way, the two maps here are not generally the same. And, but but uh, the construction of the cyclotomic trace ensures that the, the, map, that the map from TC homotopy equalizes these two maps. Right. Uh, and then we want to have the map from the sphere going in here. I'm going to call it iota. And I think so. I think this is the old notation. And then, you know, th then there was kind of a, a, a lot of new, uh, new perspectives and, and significant new ideas uh, related to this story uh, about five to ten years ago, in involving papers by Hesselholt and by Nikolaus and Schulze, uh, where many of these things got new names. So the circle homotopy fixed points are now called TC minus. Uh, the circle Tate construction is called TP. <laughs> the, uh, this comparison between geometric fixed points and, and CP Tate construction is called the cyclotomic structure map phi. So this is phi HS1. I mean, I mean there's implicitly a prime in the story, but it's going to be fixed in my situation, so I'll probably omit the P again. And as I said, this, this tends to not appear in the notation at all. Um, so now it might look more familiar, I hope. Uh, to, 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 to younger readers. Okay, so, um, so, and now, so to make computations here now, you can do this in six easy steps. So what are these six easy steps? So the calculational strategy uh, usually is then, so, so this goes back, for example, to, so Bergstedt and Maltzen followed this strategy for the, in the case of the integers at odd primes, uh, and with Hesselhoff and Maltzen in the case of finite field, And I guess myself, in the case of the integers of the prime two, and then Christian Sony and myself um, for topological cyclic homology at primes five and above. Uh, so the strategy was, well, so first of all, we want to calculate TH of B. So the first thing we're going to have to realize is that uh, we want to recall maybe that the V2 homotopy of TH of BP2 is exterior, in this case, on three classes, lambda one, lambda two, and lambda three and polynomial on a class mu. So these are going to be in degrees 2p minus 1, 2p squared minus 1, 2p cubed minus 1, and 2p cubed. This was in, uh, uh, this was in, uh, in a paper by Wigleik Angeltweit and myself uh, based on his master's thesis, but uh, as, as an example. And then once one understands THH, the kind of the little speck grain of sand that's supposed to generate the pearl or, or the gem that creates the crystal or whatever is to understand this, this map. What is the effect here? So we want to show, step two is to show that this is localization away from U. So that the effect of this cyclotomic structure map basically is to invert uh, U. So, it, it, so that the target is gotten just by replacing polynomials by Laurent polynomials here. And then since I am giving this kind of quasi-historical talk, um, the third step was then to show, compare TC with the homotopy equalizer of these two maps. And one would show that that was, that, that was an equivalence in sufficiently high degrees. Um, but with Nicolaus and Scholze, I mean, this calculational approach has been turned into the definition and, and TC is the homotopy equalizer. <laughs> So, so, so this is just automatic by, I mean, this is all taken care of by Nicolaus and Schultz. So we, and, and, and actually, it's, a lot, it's better than we had before, because we, in the past we would only get that we had an equivalence in the range of degrees where this localization was an isomorphism. 
And in, up, in the examples seen so far, that was good enough. But for our application, there's actually a little bit of ga a gap of around 2p degrees near degree 2p cubed, which we would be missing without the nuclear Schultz paper. So, so this is, well, I mean, there's lots of good, isn't, that's a very minor good reason to do this. Anyway, so, uh, and then, so now we understand the, the CP geometric fixed points on the CP Tate construction here. And then there's, of course, a kind of a hierarchy of groups here going up to CP infinity or, or S1, which I guess, yeah, maybe I should have switched the S1 with a T at some stage here as well. But we'll, we'll see. There are quite a few T's in the story. So, so the next step is then to calculate these objects. Uh, which are given you know, by circle homotopy fixed points and so on, but, but it's usually done inductively uh, uh, by along doing it for CPN for every n by induction. So we want to calculate the homotopy so we want to calculate the homotopy fixed point spectral sequence given by so if the, the group cohomology of a circle or the cohomology of CP infinity, I'm going to mod P cohomology, I'm going to write as polynomials in one generator T in second cohomology tensor with the V2 homotopy of THH of BP2 converging to the V2 homotopy of the circle homotopy fixed points of BP2. That's one spectral sequence. That's the circle homotopy fixed point spectral sequence related to this part. Over here, uh, well, as, as the spectrum we're looking at, the homotopy is obtained by inverting mu there's a corresponding spectral sequence here where the E2 term is also gotten just by inverting mu. So I'm just going to write mu inverse um, for the E2 term. And I think I want to write um, yeah, so this is calculating the V2 homotopy of the um, circle homotopy fixed points of this CP Tate construction. Um, and in this corner, we have this circle Tate construction. So I'm going to use a hat to indicate that. Or I'm going to write a hat. Uh, and now the, the polynomial generator for the cohomology of the circle, group cohomology of the circle is now the wrong, the wrong polynomial generator. So the three vertices of that non-commuting triangle are, can be computed by, by means of these spectral sequences. And once you have that, then you uh, want to identify G in these terms. Now we have a spectral sequence description of what's going on here and a spectral sequence description of what's going on here. And we have an equivalence. Um, uh, but it's not the, uh, the identity, so uh, you have to figure out how do, how do classes at the E infinity term here correspond to classes at the E infinity term here. And this is something which you might overlook if you, if you act as if it's the identity. So identify G or V2 star of G in these terms. And then finally, uh, we want to say, well, this was the homotopy. E we have these two spectra, Tc minus and something equivalent to Tp. And this is the, now the homotopy equalizer. So there's a short exact sequence going from the homotopy here to the equalizer, the algebraic equalizer of these two homomorphisms. And the kernel of that comes around by the, from the co-equalizer. So, um, so one has the, uh, so, so, so one wants to find the equalizer and the co-equalizer, which I guess is the right-to-right -right functor of the equalizer in this context, uh, of the two homomorphisms uh, G composed with RH, which is you know, canonical and, oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, this is called the canonical map. Sorry. Uh, although, I mean, then it's kind of, a, I mean, this, then this composite is usually also called the canonical map. Um, and, uh, gamma 1 hat HS1, so that's the phi HT. And, and then we write, so then you see that the V2 homotopy that we're trying to compute maps onto this equalizer, and it receives a map from the, uh, well, let's say the desuspension of the co-equalizer 
And it it'll turn out in our case that both the quotient here and the subobjects are free modules over the ring I talked about, so there's no extension problem there. Let's see, 25 minutes. I don't think I. So, so this six step strategy is carefully carried out in our paper. So we actually do all these, we calculate all these infinitely many spectral sequences. Uh, and in particular, along the way, so in, in, um, in our paper, we also, so in particular, in addition to calculating the topological cyclic homology, or, or if you like, the, this atomic homology, we also calculate the, um, the V2 homotopy of topological periodic and topological negative cyclic homology. So, um, so, so we're computing the, uh, we're also computing the, the syntomic, oh, sorry, the prismatic, the analog of the prismatic homology for BP2, uh, as well as, as its appropriate, uh, the appropriate piece of the so-called Nigo filtration or Nygaard filtration. I think that's a, I th anyway, the Danes will have to correct my Danish here. Uh, Nigo. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so those contain a, a large part. I mean, here there's a lot of uh, uh, V3 torsion, which is probably has sort of arithmetic interest outside of algebraic K theory. But, uh, but that's a longer story. Okay, so the key technical point is to this thing about the, uh, after you've calculated these, uh, the homotope of these three objects uh, by a spectral sequence, you understand the modulo sum filtration, and you want to identify an equalizer of two maps. And of course, this can be a little del delicate because, because for example, uh, I even if two things agree uh, at the E infinity term, they might actually differ by something in higher, adders, uh, higher filtration. Or, uh, or if, you, if you don't actually control this unit here, you know, if two things agree and you change one of them by a scalar, it, they're not going to agree any longer unless the scalar is one. So, um, <laughs> uh, so, so, uh, so one has to be a little careful here. Uh, so, so a key part of this is I, I did mention, so when B is BP2 here, there are some classes lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 here, and they all lift to classes lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 here, and we want to know that those are actually equalized uh, by the two maps. And so the trick to do, one way to do that is simply to construct them all the way over here. So we're going to construct classes in K theory, which I'm going to denote with a little K. So there's going to be classes lambda 1K, lambda 2K, and lambda 3K in the K theory of BP2, whose trace images will map by pi to the lifts here of the lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3s. And then they will automatically be equalizing what they need. So in a sense, main, the, Maybe the main point of, of our approach, which isn't necessarily straight, well, uh, let, let me not predict what's easy with other approaches. Anyway, um, so let me, I think I'm going to uh, put this one up. Let me try to go through some of these six points. I mean, some of them, like three, will be very short, as you understand. Um, so let's see, so step one is just basically, basically making you familiar with the notation. So, um, so, the v, so the, 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 you know, v of 2 represents mod p v1 and v2 homotopy, and the mod p v1 and v2 homotopy of bp2 is just fp in degree 0. So this is just the mod p I know McLean spectrum. And so if you apply homology here, you'll, you can deduce that the homology, well, so you get it, that the homology of v of 2 is exterior on three classes tau naught, tau one, and tau two inside of the dual Steenrod algebra, and the homology of BP2 is, uh, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm supposed to write lambda for exterior, sorry, um, is, is exterior on the conjugates of the remaining classes. So I write a bar for the conjugate class, um, and then polynomial on the psi i classes for i at least one. And so then uh, there's a spectral sequence going from the Hoxhall homology of this algebra to the homology of its topological Hoxhall homology. And since Bergstedt, we know how to evaluate that spectral sequence. And so we find that this is the homology of BP2 that I just wrote down, tensored with uh, an exterior, th three exterior generators given by, by the circle action acting on um, uh, Xi one bar, Xi two bar, and Xi three bar. These are somehow unmatched. Um, so in terms of 
you know, if you think of oxal homology in terms of cons homology, is, there's a the differential that used to be called the B operator, which is, comes from the circle action, is often also called D. I'm, I'm using sigma for this suspension operator. Uh, to answer with uh, the, uh, there's a polynomial algebra here on, on sigma, on a class that's detected by sigma three bar. And then you can read off that the V2 homotopy here has to be, because the V2 homotopy of VP2 is trivial, you basically get classes lambda one, lambda two, and lambda three that map to these three, that, who's, who, that have these Hurevich images and our polynomial class mu that has that Hurevich image. So there's a map from V2 to H, I'm gonna call H2, that takes the generators I mentioned here to those classes. So that, that's roughly how this computation goes. Um, and now I wanted to, how do we get at, at point two here? So, uh, or how do we construct these lambda classes? So we're going to introduce some power operations. And so, so Christian Alvesoni and I, we, as I said, we, we did a similar computation for BP1, uh, I think in 98 or 99, uh, and we sort of suggest that if everything was E infinity and if all smith total complexes existed and so on, we could do more or less the same algebraic calculation and get a conclusion and, and see some sort of redshift phenomenon there. And then we've learned of, uh, afterwards that, well, these things are not E infinity ring spectra. So, so somehow that doesn't work. So, but in order to make our, this argument work, we then have to basically uh, find analogs of these power operations that work with less commutativity. So I'm gonna talk now about power operations for E2 ring spectra. So, uh, and the kind of rings, so I'm going to be in interest, interested in a situation where E, so R is going to be my E2 ring spectrum. It could be the sphere, it could be the K theory of B or TC of B, THH of B, where now B is one of these E3 ring spectra, such as BP2. So, so I mean, these constructions, they use up one degree of commutativity. So you have only an E2 structure afterwards. And uh, so for, for such ring spectra, we're going to construct, um, uh, let's see, so, so there's, there, let, let me write BRP as 2K minus one for the pth braided extended power on this odd sphere. So by this I mean I take the, the pth uh, space in the little, little disks operad um, and take the p fold smash power like that. And uh, classically, this has, you know, it turns out, you, you know, the homology here, this turns out to be a more spectrum or more space. And it's convenient to put the, to think of it as the dual of a more space where the top cell is in degree 2pk minus 1. So there is a map here which turns out to be a, a piadic equivalence and which you can use to produce a power operation. So th this is, uh, so for example, Todd, I used this in a paper from the 60s. And we sort of, so we extend this story. So we also say, well, so this is gonna give us a power operation from homotopy to mod P homotopy. But we also need a power operation from mod P or V0 homotopy to V1 homotopy. And that's going to be built by looking at the braided extended power on the dual of V0. And we get a map uh, from the 2PK minus first suspension of the dual of V1, which is, all, which is practically characterized by being interesting in homology. Now, so, so to using these, we can produce power operations P upper K from pi 2K minus one of the E2 ring spectrum to the V0 homotopy in degree 2PK minus one of the ring spectrum using this, and from the V0 homotopy in degree 2K minus one of R to the V1 homotopy in degree 2PK minus one of R. Uh, so, so maybe I should explain how, so, so, the, so, so the first one, if, if you have a class in pi, if I have a class in pi 2k minus one, it's represented by some map like this, and I can apply the braided extended power to it, or the E2 extended power, if you like. Um, so R, and then you use the structure map for the E2 structure, and then we use this map I called eta naught bar from the um, 2pk minus, uh, the, yeah, 2pk minus one suspension of the dual of E naught 
and we'll look at this composite. And that is an adjoint to a map from 2PK minus 1 to V0 smash R. And, and so that is the, the value of the power operation on, on F. And you can do exactly the same thing. Once you, have, once you have this map, you can do the same thing to get an operation from V0 homotopy to V1 homotopy. And so these operations are compatible. So they're compatible with um, uh, Fred Cohen's uh, homology operation, which he calls Xi1, uh, but let's call it Q, Q upper K. Um, so it's sort of the bottom uh, dilation operation, the one you have for E2 ring spectra. Um, and of course, there are, if for the e infinity situation, this would be the Araki Kudo or Dialashev operation. And uh, moreover, there's a Cartan formula under uh, some additional commutativity hypotheses that are satisfied in our situation. So, uh, so it basically says that the power operation on a product can be written in terms of the uh, piece power and the power operation on the other factor here if x has degree to i and y has degree to j minus one. I mean, so, so, so this is only the bottom operation. We don't, I mean, homotopy power operations are not nowhere, nowhere near as clean as, as homology power operations, but we do have these. Right, and then we're gonna use those to construct these K-theory classes. So let's compare uh, BP pointed brackets two with, the, with its zeroth, so the Adam McLean spectrum, so we have a map in K-theory, and we have the natural, by naturality of the um, trace map, we have a commutative square. And let's look at what happens in degree 2p minus 1. So Bergstedt constructed a class, let me call it lambda k, in K-theory of the integers, whose image in this trace image generates, is detected in topological Hoxhill homology. This is the first torsion group in THH where there's a Z mod P and that is hit from algebraic K theory. So this was done by Buxted. And while the original proof actually involves manifold models and the stable parameterized stage cobordism theorem, there are better or there are less demanding proofs around. Anyway, this map from BP2 to ZP, uh, the, well, it's 2P-2 uh, minus two connect, two P minus two connected, you, you kill V1. Applying K-theory to it, it becomes one better, so it's 2P-1 connected, so this is surjective. So we can pick a class that I'm gonna call lambda 1K here, mapping to Bergstedt's class. And its image over here will be the, the lambda 1, actually an integral lift of the lambda 1 that I have talked about before. And now the idea is to use these power operations to keep, uh, so, so now we have a class in, in, in homotopy in the k equals p situation. So we can then define a power, we can define lambda 2k by the E2 power operation applied to lambda 1k. So that gives me a class in V0 homotopy in dimension 2p squared minus one of the K theory of VP2. And then I can apply the next power operation as PP squared, apply that to lambda 2K and get a class I'm gonna call lambda 3K, which now lives in the V1 homotopy in dimension 2P cubed minus one of the K theory of VP2. And then we can always include these two or four cell complexes into the eight, I mean eight cell complex. So both of these map then into the V2 homotopy of the K-theory of BP2, and I'm going to just keep calling them lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3 with the K-theory classes. Okay. So, um, the, I think I want to keep that. Um, Okay, so, so maybe we kind of got lost with the six easy steps. So we're now gonna go back to step two here to try to understand 
the CP Tate construction. Uh, so we want to understand the differential pattern here. And we want to, uh, and we're going to do that by producing some infinite cycles that we know are boundaries and therefore have to, or rather represent zero and therefore have to be boundaries. And those are going to be the Greek letter elements. So we take alpha one, so that's, you know, the, if you take the class of, uh, V1 in the homotopy of the Morse spectrum and you pinch off to the top cell, that gives a class, that, that's a generator of pi 2p minus 3 of the sphere. Um, and then we use the power operations to define classes I'm going to call beta 1 circ. So that's the, given by the power operation. So now I'm using the E2 ring structure on the sphere, which happens to be infinite. Uh, apply that to the class alpha 1. So that gives me a class in the V0 homotopy in dimension 2p squared minus 2p minus 1 of the sphere. Uh, this is not a Z mod P in general. Um, and I'm going to get another class that I'm going to call g gamma 1 circ by taking the P squared minus P power operation on beta 1 circ, which is now in the V1 homotopy in dimension 2P cubed minus 2P squared minus 1. And the circ is supposed to suggest that it, it's a ring. It has to do with the ring structure. It's created from the ring structure in, in the background. And you can push these across to the V2 homotopy of the sphere. Um, of course, we, all have, we have some other classes here. Um, we have beta 1. I'm not sure if there's a completely standard name here. But if you start with V2 in the homotopy of, I hope I have the, I think this is usually a 0 if I were to be consistent. Let's see. So if you think of V2 as a homotopy class in dimension 2p squared minus 2 of the V of 1 complex, and you pinch off to the top two cells, you get a class in mod p homotopy that I'm going to call beta 1 prime. Sometimes it's, it's either beta 1 prime or beta 1 bar in the literature. And if you pinch off once more to the top cell, you get beta 1. But we're going to stop at, at mod p. So, so there is another class, beta 1. So there is a beta 1 prime is a class here sitting in the same group as beta naught circ. They are not actually equal, but they do agree when we get over here. So as long as we're talking about V2 homotopy, my power operation classes and these usual chromatic classes are the same. And the same thing happens over here. There's a class I might call gate gamma 1 double prime gotten by taking the class V3 in the homotopy of that eight cell complex, pinching off onto the top four cells. And then if we include that in here again, we get the same class if we go from gamma 1 circ or gamma 1 double prime. So, but, uh, so, so this is the class which, if you had pinched all the way to the top cell, it would be the first Greek letter element. And we haven't talked so much about height 3 classes this week, so I think it's about time. Um, right. So um, let's see. So step two now is about um, understanding the spectral sequence, the circle homotopy fixed. Well, we have the circle homotopy fixed point spectral sequence and the CP Tate spectral sequence. And I think I don't need, don't need this. Now we'd like to see, use the unit map from the sphere into k theory and all those. So we have these classes. The, the Greek ladder elements are you know, in the spheres. They're all the way over on the left. So we can map them into k theory and look at their trace invariants and see what we know about them. And this, is, this is one way to get at the initial differentials that make these calculations work. Um, so we have, uh, yeah, so on the one hand, we have the, uh, the homotopy fixed point spectral sequence. Um, so starting with the cohomology of the circle and the homotopy, V2 homotopy of THH to of BP2 converging to the homotopy of, I guess, TC minus of BP2. Um, and then afterwards, I want to compare that with the CP Tate. But what do we know here? So, so let's see. So maybe I want to draw a picture. Uh, so let's see. So, so here's T, and maybe T to the P, T to the P squared. So this is sort of ser grading. So I have the, the cohomological, the group cohomology horizontally, and the homotopy of. Um, of uh, 
THH vertically. So the, the, you know, the, it's conver the, the degree it's converging to is the total degree, which are constant along lines like this. It's not an Adams indexing. Sorry about that. Um, and um, then it's relatively easy. So the circle homotopy fixed points, if you just look at the two columns involving these two columns, it basically only involves the circle action on THH. We, we know the sigma operator acting on THH, so it's relatively easy to determine what can be detected in these two columns. So it's relatively easy to show that um, when you look at alpha 1, let's see, I want to say this one, yeah, alpha 1 in, in the sphere, it's going to have to be detected by T lambda 1 in the circle homotopy fixed point spectral sequence. So here, alpha 1 goes here in the, it's T times, it's detected by T times lambda 1. And also the class V3 is going to be detected by uh, T mu 3 or mu. You may know, if you know the computations for THH of FP and TC of FP, you may know that the prime P, that there's, a, there's an additive extension so that P is detected by T times whatever the class in degree two is called. Uh, so, so that's kind of the analog of this result. And, and this is easy, uh, just as easy. So now we're going to use the naturality with respect to the power operations to say that, well, applying the power operation here and the Cartan formula tells us that this has to be detected by t to the p lambda 2. And gamma 1 double prime has to be detected by t to the p cubed squared lambda 3. So this comes out of the power operations and a fairly careful check of indeterminacies. OK. So now, right, so, so, so here's t to the p. So beta 1 prime is detected over here. And, and the, the first gamma gamma 1 double prime element is detected over there. Now I'm going to push this, you know, uh, the, circle tate, uh, the circle homotopy fixed points map to the circle tate construction and then to the CP tate construction by restricting. So there is a corresponding spectral sequence for the group CP with the tate. Um, so that's converging to the homotopy over here. And so where I'm interested in where do these classes in the sphere go in the circle homotopy fixed points? So, so where are they detected over here? Well, I can, what I'm looking at now is I, let, let me continue all the way over here. Now notice this map factored through the unit map from the sphere into THH of B. And S is equivalent to THH of S, so that it goes through the zero skeleton of THH. So in fact, this map goes into B, not, into, not just THH of B. So, so, so in our case, the, the unit map from the sphere over here factors through BP2. And in B2 homotopy, it means it factors through the alma mclean spectrum. It means every positive dimensional class goes to zero. And the Greek letters are in positive stems. So they all go to zero in, in the V2 homotopy of, uh, well, let's say THH of BP2 TCP. So they, they all, all of these go to zero. And that's how you get a differential. So the, um, the only way that um, so, so the only way that alpha one can be hit by a differential is that there's a differential, a two p differential from the horizontal axis, hitting a unit mod p times t lambda one. So here's t to the one minus p, and here's the short differential that kills it. And then after that, the only possible differential is a two p squared differential from t to the p minus p squared hitting t to the p lambda 2. And after that, the only possible differential is a d3, d 2p cubed differential from t to the p squared minus p cubed hitting a unit times t p squared lambda 3. And after that, the only possible differential is an odd length differential of length 2p cubed plus 1 hitting from, from a class. So u1 is the generator in the first cohomology of, or Tate cohomology of Cp times t to the minus p cubed hitting a unit times t mu. So that's over here. And that's going to hit this class. They actually get longer and longer, even if it didn't. Uh, my picture is not completely to scale. Um, 
Remember, p is at least 7. So this is at least 686. You know? <laughs> um, anyway, so once you know this, then you can work out that the only possible differential pattern here is that e, the e infinity term, or the, the, the differential pattern tells you that the e infinity term, all that's left are these, is the exterior algebra on the lambda classes and the class tp cubed and its inverse. So you end up with just having the Laurent polynomials on tp cubed tensor the exterior algebra on lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. And here you see that, well, now mu is detected by t to the minus p cubed. And so the effect here is simply to invert mu. So, so, so basically, this calculation lets you finish step two to show that the, the effect of the cyclotomic structure map is to invert this, this class mu in dimension 2p cubed. Yep. And then step three, as I said, used to be tricky. And now it's a definition. So this tells us now that this is, in fact, the homotopy equalizer of these two kinds of maps. And now there's a question, of course, of how much I want to actually try to squeeze into six, so, well, seven, nine minutes. Nine minutes is, is a bit. Um, so the next step now is to, um, right, so, so, so the, in our paper, we now do quite a lot of work to determine the structure of these homotopy fixed point and mu localized homotopy fixed point and circle Tate spectral sequences for every n, CPN for increasing n. There's a lot of bookkeeping, and you don't want to do that. But it, I mean, the, 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 as I said, the feature or the, the output of it is that we get a computation not only of, of Tc, but also of Tc minus and Tp. So if you're interested in prismatic homology, we actually get that. But uh, so in, in hindsight, uh, and this is an idea I learned from the paper by Androxit and Wilson, since the answer turns out to be, I think it's still up here, right? Um, turns out to be free as a V3 module, means that if you were to compute the V of 3 homotopy uh, and look at the Bockstein spectral sequence, the Bockstein spectral sequence would just collapse. So uh, it turns out to be not quite trivial to carry that through because there is room for one or two Bockstein differentials that you need some kind of argument to, to get rid of. But for expositional purposes like this, I think I can cheat and, and say that, well, it's probably easier to first think about what's happening if you, do, if you in, don't compute the V of 2 homotopy but, but the V of 3 homotopy. Let's see. Uh, so there's a. Uh, um, I, now I'm going to mess up my. So I'm, I'm saying that there is a Bockstein. There's a Bockstein. So a V3 Bockstein spectral sequence going from the V3 homotopy of Tc of BP2 with a generator that I might call V3 converging to the V2 homotopy. And uh, I propose that we now discuss the calculations in V of 3 homotopy instead, where we divide out by V3, which was detected by team U. Because that, the, the, here, the, this part will be finite and, and, in a, in, and almost concentrated in such a range of degrees that there is no room for Bockstein differentials. There is actually room for a few, but, but there, there are ways around that. Right. But now there is a problem. How do you calculate V3 homotopy? After all, v, that means taking the cofiber for the V3 self map on V2 homotopy. And V3 acts trivially here. So if I were to go directly to the V3 homotopy, I would introduce an exterior generator in dimension 2p cubed minus 1. I would sort of float around, and I would have to keep track of that. So the trick is to use, what, uh, what, uh, uh, to use that we know that V3 is detected in T mu in um, one filtration, or, or in filtration minus two. And to basically use a kind of modif so there's something called a modified atom spectral sequence, which was used by, by Milgram to relate power operations in homotopy to, to Steenrod operations in ext. So it's, it's uh, I prefer, and there's another modified spe atom spectral sequence studied by B uh, Berens, Hill, Hopkins, Mahowald, where they kind of uh, uh, accelerate, so they, they make a, the E2 term into a hyper -ext instead of an ordinary ext. Both of these are called modified atom spectral sequences, and they're different. So uh, the, the first one, the one that was used by Milgram and others, sort of delays the effect uh, of, of certain things. It moves certain classes up into higher atom filtrations or higher filtrations, well, farther away from the origin somehow, 
and, and some phenomena are then behaving, uh, somehow it spreads the, the differential patterns a little bit apart. Whereas the, the, the one studied by Hill, Hopkins, Mahold, and Berens, it kind of accelerates or hastens things. It moves more and more of the stuff into the homological algebra. So more, is, more takes place at, at the H2 or at the algebraic level. So, so the, one I'm the, the modification I'm talking about here is kind of a delayed uh, homotopy fixed point spectral sequence, where we, instead of looking at the usual uh, filtration, so I'm, I'm thinking, I mean, there are at least two approaches to, to these homotopy fixed point spectral sequences. I'm thinking about the one where one is filtering the free contractible S1 space by skeleton. So that gives me a filtration. So the spectral sequences arise from a filtration of topological cyclic homology. Um, and the multiplication by V3 is then, uh, can, be, can be lifted to a filtration shifting map. So if you think of it as a map from a filtered object to another filtered object that moves what was in filtration zero to filtration minus two, the idea is then to take the mapping cone of that filtered map, keeping the filtration shift in place. And the effect of that is then that at the level of E2 terms, um, the, the delayed E2 term is simply the algebraic, uh, since, the team, since the action by V2 is given by multiplication by T mu, which is not a zero divisor, it's uh, the effect on E2 terms is simply to, to divide out by T mu. So I think I need to write a little more for this to make sense. Um, and for that, I guess I need a little bit of I think we have seen this picture. Um. So I have put my notes on my homepage where there are more details about this particular approach, even if it's not in the paper. So if you, for some reason, are very interested and don't want to talk with me about it, then you can look there. But um, <laughs> let's see. Um, let, let me focus just on, so, so, the, uh, so we have the, so I'm going to just, just be brief to focus on what can we say about this and what can we say about that and how do we get at this equalizer and co-equalizer. Um, so the, the usual spectral sequence here had the E2 term given by polynomials on T and the homotopy, the V2 homotopy of THH, like so. But then if I look at the delayed version, which then I'm going to divide out by T mu. And this is now converging to the V3 homotopy of TC minus of BP2. So this is not quite the ordinary homotopy fixed point spectral sequence, it's the what I call the delayed version of it. Um, and it turns out we, we know the differential pattern. The differentials we know about tell the whole story here. And so one fi can find the E infinity term. And inside of this E infinity term, there are some interesting classes of the form T to the D lambda 1, T to the DP lambda 2, T to the DP squared lambda 3, where in each case D is some number between 0 and P. And we can also have the, we can multiply these things by the other lambda classes. And these uh, turn out to be the equalizer, these are all in the equalizer of the canonical map and the Frobenius map in, in whatever notation you like. Um, in addition, there is uh, an exterior algebra on, oh yeah. There's also the exterior algebra on the lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3 in the E infinity term. And they are also in the equalizer. Whereas if you're over on the, on the right-hand side here, the uh, E2 term, that's the mu localized E2 term in the delayed form, well, without, uh, in, for V2 homotopy, it was given by, well, the circle homotopy fixed points of the mu localized homotopy of THH. But then we're going to look at the delayed one, and then we divide out by T mu. It says mu is a unit 
this uh, is just the uh, just concentrated on on the vertical axis. And now we can show that the we're, we're trying to study the homotopy equalizer of two maps, one of which the source of which is known over here, the target is known over here, and it turns out the co-equalizer in question is just the exterior algebra on these lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3. So the, uh, so the result is that the V3 homotopy of TC of BP2 sits, you know, it's the homotopy fiber, so it's an extension it maps onto the, this equalizer. And uh, how big is that? Well, let's see. So there were P minus 1 options for D here, and it's tensored with two exterior generators. So that makes four times p minus one possibilities. It's the same every time. So there are three times four times p minus one generators here. And there are three cubed, also eight generators here. So the equalizer has dimension, so this is 12p minus 12. So there are 12p minus four classes in the equalizer and, well, eight classes in the co-equalizer. So the total, so, so the conclusion here is that the V3 homotopy of Tc of BP2 the, this is an FP vector space, and the dimension is 12 p minus 1 plus 8 plus 8, or 12 p plus 4. So that's the number that you saw at the beginning. And you can make these. Yeah, all right, uh, let me stop there. <laughs> Before beauty. <laughs> Are there questions or other comments? <laughs> I mean, did, did you have something in mind for ruling out the one bus line that could happen? Um, I mean, so so uh, so with the even filtration, of course, you, I'm sure you're able to rule it out once you have the e-commutative situation. So, so one way to, um, so basically there, uh, the, there's probably some more filtrations around in this picture. And you know that the, the Bockstein differential has to somehow respect these filtrations. And, and, and that might very well show you that there's no room for differentials after all because the filtrations don't work. Uh, so in our computations, when we're doing everything in V of two homotopy, then it's simply the homotopy fixed point and Tate filtrations that just take care of that somehow. Th those are the extra filtrations that, that take care of it, but, but it also involves writing down three times infin infinity many spectral sequences. So, uh, you know, not, not something I want to do right now, but, but, um, but I'm sure that the even filtration is also a perfectly, you know, perfectly uh, good uh, way to do this and, uh, and has the advantage that you only write down basically three differentials rather than three times infinite, infinite well. So there, 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 our story sort of stops here because we don't know about uh, the ring structure on V of four. We don't have a delta family. And of course, so, so, but that's because we're insisting on doing things in spectra. We're not going to synthetic spectra or, or things like this. So presumably that's, you know, the, the, the path ahead is probably to, to, to relieve oneself a little bit of the traditions of spectra and, 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 and carry a, uh, carry out computations at all heights if one wants to. But um, anyway, it, it, uh, it works and it, it is somehow the first time that we actually get gamma family elements out in a K-theory computation. It is, I mean, these TC computations are a little special in that we're actually able to compute telescopic homotopy. You know, so, so we are able to, uh, we're, 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 the computations are not coming by descent from Lubin Tate theory E3, even though that's how I somehow, somehow hope to understand things, but we are, we are actually, uh, if you do the V of two computation, there's lots of V3 torsion, but in the, the limits defining topological cyclic homology make all that torsion assemble up into have infinite order. So we're actually seeing infinite order. We're building up infinite order uh, V3 periodicity from, from things that are V3 torsion. Um, and that seems to be somewhat unique to the topological cyclic methods.